state television company Western Armenia represent the most important news for today. Today's broadcast. The young deputy of the Republic of Western Armenia, Alexander Nazarian. Yerushek Yakosan counters the representative of Baku. Aliyev hates Armenians as young toxic. The Chamber of Deputies of Chile announced April 24 as a national day of remembrance of the victims of genocide against Armenians. In Brussels, they remember the memory of the victims of the genocide against Armenians. Today we are with the Armenians of Greece and with all Armenians, Nikos Tendias. For you, Charles Van Lavour. In 2024, on April 24, in the French city of Draguignan, the President Armenia Gabriel gave a parliamentary mandate to Alexander Nazarian. Let's remind that Alexander Nazarian is the youngest deputy of the Parliament of the Republic of Western Armenia. He is only 19 years old. Yerushek Yakosyan countered the representative of Baku. The International Court of Justice examined Baku's claim against Armenia. Yerushek Yakosyan, the representative of Eastern Armenia, referred to the criticism voiced by Baku on his statement denying the alleged occupation of Baku territory by Eastern Armenia. The representative of Baku insisted that Eastern Armenia denies its invasion and the oppressive response of the international community to the occupation by which the latter rejects the illusion of self-determination created by Armenia to serve its own interests. Baku greatly emphasized the judgment of the European Court of Human Rights, according to which Armenia had jurisdiction over Artsakh under the first part of the European Convention. Baku, however, ignores the fact that the decision of jurisdiction by the court according to the precedent practice of the court cannot be equated with the standards of recording the responsibility of the state for an international violation, said the representative of Eastern Armenia on international legal issues. Kiriakosan clarified that the European court has never ruled that Armenia occupied Artsakh, and the same can be said about the resolution of the UN Security, Security Council, which referred to the Artsakh conflict and which were misrepresented by Azerbaijan's representatives and lawyers. The Security Council called on Armenia to continue and exert its influence to ensure the fulfillment of the norms by the Armenians of Artsakh, but never mentioned that Armenia is an occupying state, let alone an aggressor, but instead of referring to the local Armenian force, calling on the conflicting parties to immediately resume negotiations for conflict resolution within the framework of the Minsk Group peace process. This is exactly what the authorities of Armenia and Artsakh have done. Baku, on the contrary, as the President Aliyev said, unilaterally decided that war is inevitable and the Minsk group is dead. According to President Aliyev, it was Baku that started the Second Karabakh War, which the representative of Baku did not try to deny. Yesterday explained Kiryakosyan. Aliyev hates Armenians like young Turks did. In the context of the 119th anniversary of the genocide against the army, the international famous Newsweek newspaper also referred to Baku's anti-Armenian policy in an extensive article. The author of the article is Dr. Eliza von Joyden Forge, executive director of the Lemkin Institute for Genocide Prevention in Philadelphia. Eliza von Joyden Forge especially noted in her article that in September of last year, the Amaras Monastery, one of the oldest religious complexes of Christianity and the sanctuary of the Armenian Apostolic Church, was captured by Baku, whose army invaded the self-governing Armenian enclave of Artsakh, widely known as Artsakh. The migration, which ended almost 2,000 years of continuous Armenian presence and deprived one of the world's oldest Christian communities of the, its cradle, was one of the recent genocide ethnic cleansing. It is tragedy that 109 years after the beginning of the genocide committed by Ottoman Turks against the Armenians and even celebrated around the world on April 24, Armenians are still under attack. We at the Philadelphia-based Lemke Genocide Prevention Institute, whose mission is to prevent the recurrence of such evil, have watched in honor as Azerbaijan soldiers routinely committed atrocities against Armenian soldiers and civilians in their custody, including beheadings, ab amputations, humanitarian, which are often videotaped and shared on social networks, wrote the executive director of Lemkin Genocide Prevention Institute. The Chamber of Deputies of Chile announced April 24 as a national day of remembrance of victims of genocide against Armenians. The Chamber of Deputies of Chile has approved the project to declare April 24 of each year as a national day of remembrance for the victims of the genocide against Armenians. This is reported by a DR Armenian noting that the resolution was presented by MP Christian Araya, the chairman of the Chile Armenian Parliamentary Friendship Group, who met with Hakub Tabakian and Aram Muratian, representatives of the Armenian National Council of South America, in March. 
The leaders of the time deliberately ignored it and hid it under the veil of unjust indifference, which persists to this day, but which we face from a distant country like ours, humbly but firmly and energetically. Raising our voice in the face of such injustice, officially recogni recognizing the Armenian matrix. I am now during the session. In speech, Christian and I also referred to the events that took place in Artsakh, emphasizing at a time when the Armenian people are again subjected to an unjust attack, when Artsakh is invaded and its citizens are forced to leave their homes, when the powers and international organizations look away indifferently. I cannot but be proud that the Chilean parliament has a foresight and a comprehensive approach to raise one's voice in the face of the genocide that Armenians were subjected to. In Brussels, they remembered the memory of the victims of genocide against Armenians. An event dedicated to the memory of the victims of the Armenian genocide took place in Brussels, which was organized by the Committee of Belgian Armenians. Ambassador of Eastern Armenia to Belgium, permanent representative of Armenia to the EU, Tigran Balayan, representative of the diplomatic mission of Armenia to NATO, many higher ranking Belgian politicians, representatives of state and public institutions, ambassadors were present at the commemorative event. It is our duty to be at this memorial every year and remember what happened a century ago because every time our willpower is lacking, when we fail, we feed the pain, the risk of the repetition and we see history repeating itself. That will carry this. Today we are with the Armenians of Greece and with all Armenians, Nikos Dendias. The Minister of National Defense of Greece, Nikos Dendias, referring to the hundreds of nine anniversary of genocide against the Armenians, noted that the recognition of the historical truth is necessary to avoid the repetition of crimes against humanity. The Greek minister wrote about this in his Ex-Microbal. Today our thoughts are with the Armenians of Greece and the whole world of Armenia, respecting the memory of the victims of the genocide committed against Armenia, the minister wrote. Exhibition dedicated to the 100th anniversary of Charles Naznavur. The temporary exhibition dedicated to world famous singer and film actor Charles Naznavur to be organized in Yerevan. Presents about 250 array exhibits related to the life and activities of the chansonnier, which includes rare photos, periodicals published in different countries, commemorative editions, audio albums, as well as unique samples of movie posters with Aznavur's participation. The exhibition was organized on the basis of the collection created by the joint efforts of Yukom Seo, Ralph Yirikian, and Doctor of Historical Sciences Haik Demoyan as a tribute to the memory of the great Armenian. The exhibition consists of four main sections, or about 50 unique and still little known photographs, about 100 large and small cities released in different years, as well as more than 40 original posters of films shot in France and other countries with the participation of Charles Naznavur will be presented. Dozen multilingual magazines and periodicals published with the image of Charles Naznavur and are a separate exhibit. Commemorative medals, stamps, badges, postcards, and other issues dedicated to Charles Naznavur's lives and activities will also be included in the exhibition. Of particular interest are the postcards and CDs signed by Charles Naznavur in different years. Some of the exhibits that are part of the collection will also be shown in Gimri. The initiators intend to donate the entire collection to Charles Naznavur Museum in Yerevan after the end of the exhibition to organize permanent and temporary exhibitions. The official opening of the exhibition will take place at the National Museum Institute of Architecture named after Alexander Tamanyan. The exhibition will run until July 22. This was all for today. Goodbye.